as we mentioned, the cow in, in most cases is now nearly deemed as an athlete in comparison mm -hmm. to maybe what, they, what a cow was a number of years ago. And something we've seen grow in huge amount in recent years is where a, a farmer decides to give a cow a, 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 a supplement drink straight away after calving. Mm -hmm. What's the reason for that and what's the benefit? The biggest challenge is when a cow calves down, she goes from a situation where she's not milking to having to produce huge volumes of milk very fast. That's a huge physiological challenge to that cow. So everything that you can do to improve the cow's um, acclimatization is a benefit. Okay. And the main thing is the rumen function, okay. getting the rumen working. The rumen is the diet wagon of the cow, uh, and that has to perform. A cow goes from not producing any milk to producing you know, the big volumes within a few days, which is a huge singular challenge. And furthermore, the other big challenge is the immune, the, the fact that she, within the week before calving, she shoves all her antibodies that are in her system into the milk, into the colostrum, which leaves her hugely vulnerable to infections. Okay. And that's a second challenge that her body has to undertake in a very short period of time. So in the run-up to calving, the cow won't be eating correctly, so yeah. she'll be actually... Uh, breaking down fat off her body mm. and trying to get energy from that way because she's not getting no feed into her. Yes. And then after calving, it's the same for a few days. So the, the idea of that drink is to increase the rumen function to get their appetite up so they're eating and grubbing it that bit faster. Um, and it's also to have antioxidants, to get antioxidants into the cow because as you say, she's after putting all of her antibodies yeah. into the milk and into mm. the classroom for the calf so it's to try and get something back to her. So our product for that would be first drink and it has high levels of phosphorus and yeast in it and those are for the microflora in the rumen so that they, they increase their activity and there's also B, B vitamins in there and they increase the activity uh, and the appetite for the cow. And there's one component in there called niacin and niacin breaks down ketones. What would be the benefit of breaking down ketones and why would ketones be in the cow? Because obviously as you say there's a lot of fat mobilisation <coughs> and the cow's digestive system and physiology is to break down sugars and fats down to glucose. Ketones is a deleterious product and it affects the body, affects the brain, and it's not where we want to go. So the, there's two pathways out of fat mobilization, one for glucose, one for ketones. We want to shove that to glucose and not to ketones. Okay. So um, in humans, are, humans are kind of familiar with the keto keto diet, oh, which yeah, is yeah. great to lose body fat and body condition, <coughs> because generally humans want to get slimmer, yeah. whereas our cows, we, we want, don't want and, that. We, we want the opposite, so um, whilst it may be partially desirable for some athletes, human athletes or human people, it's certainly not what we want in our cows. Okay, so anything we can do to break down those ketones and stop the mobilisation of fat is a good thing for the cow? Absolutely, if the fat is mobilised too fast, we get keto production that brings on the increased risk of displaced albumasins, okay. which uh, in the first three weeks of calving, which is highly likely, and that will lead on to an LDA, and that will you know, set her back by a few weeks in terms of milk production and fertility. And also, that supplementation drink is a source of calcium also yep. to help reduce the onset of milk fever after calving. Yeah, and we, we see that in practice. We're using those treatments a lot more. Okay. Um, farmers are using themselves. Yes. And then we're using it as a supplementary treatment for any cows maybe that might have a bit of milk fever, mastitis, or any early postpartum condition. During springtime, during calving, there's an awful lot of things can go wrong for the cow. What is the prevalence of displaced abomasums? Are they more prevalent on farms in recent years? They're more recognised in recent years. Okay. Um, so displaced albumasums, the occurrence rate is probably between 2 and 4%. Right. And there are two types of DAs. So a DA is a displaced albumasum. The albumasum is a fourth stomach in a cow. So it's where the true digestion takes place before the contents enter the um, small intestine. Sometimes there can be extra fermentation go on in the albumasum, which leads to gas buildup. <clears throat> and that gas buildup allows the abomasum to get trapped and that knocks out the functioning of the gut which means you get an immediate drop in milk production. So the most common one is LDA 
and the, there's a right displacement as well. So 90% are left side displacements, 10% right, right side. So how would a farmer know he had an LDA? So there's a few things. First of all, the cow would be back in milk. The cow would refuse ration. The cow usually is not sick. The cow is eating lots of times. She may even so be she'll eat silage or she'll eat a bit of grass, but she won't eat concentrates. She will refuse concentrates. It's as specific as that. And you get an accompanying uh, drop of milk production. And would she have a temperature? Unless she had something like metritis, we find that of LDA cows, 40% have metritis. Okay, so it leads, does one cause the other? The metritis does have an effect uh, where it's, they're more likely to get it. In a study we did in 2005, 33% uh, of all LDAs were first calved heifers. Right. Um, poor room and fill in the post calving period is another big factor. And metritis would be coming from maybe uterine infections and so on, yeah. so the cow not being 100% or the heifer not being 100% Cleaning. at calving, not cleaning out, maybe yeah. your mineral profile not being 100%. Yeah. Yes, correct. And typically it's diagnosed in cows under three weeks calved. Okay. So if you can get a cow past the three week period, postpartum, without an LDA, she's unlikely to develop it subsequently. And would the same be said for an RDA then? Correct. So once they get past three weeks, that's the critical time period, they, it's very unlikely they'd have an LDA or an RDA. Yeah, if you can get them past that threshold, you're kind of out the gap. Really. And what would the treatment, uh, in general, what would your treatment process be for uh, an LDA, so when you go out on farm? So we've been doing LDAs for the last 40 years in practice and originally they would have been presented as late term LDAs when the cow had gone dry. Okay. And at that stage the only cure would be uh, surgery and at that stage the cow would never come back into milk so the satisfaction with the operation was less than ideal. What we find now is because our farmers, our clients know the sign so well they present them to us at a much earlier stage so we do a surgical procedure uh, to correct the deflate the abomasum and stitch it back in the right place. Because I suppose we've become more proficient at that, uh, we find it's now it's not a life-saving procedure; it's a lactation-saving procedure. All oh, right. So, so the cow will get back to milk. Absolutely. If you get them early enough, uh, lots of times it will have no effect on the lactation in the course of the year, and. 95% of those cows come back in service and hold and successfully hold a pregnancy. So the critical things here are um, to know the symptoms, to spot the symptoms early and get seek veterinary attention before the lactation is gone. Okay. So that's the critical thing. This past two years we've got introduced a new surgical technique, keyhole surgery technique for doing LDAs and some cows are more are better suited to it and we've now introduced um, with some cows where we can do the surgery without uh, using antibiotics. What would you use to, what would you give the farmer to give the cow maybe in the few days after, after the so surgery? So for all surgeries, whether it's keyhole or conventional surgery, we, we do a few things to get the cow back into optimal health. We put them on once they're milking for a few days just to take the pressure off the cow. Okay. We get them to put the cow in a better housing situation where she's got more access to the head feed so she can fill her rumen. Because a full rumen blocks the abomasum redisplacing. Okay. Um, we put them usually on um, uh, something like Ketovit okay, to, yeah. pr to bring the blood sugars up to make up for the ketogenic status that they'd be in. Okay. Because most of these cows will have ketosis. Okay. Time to get and to so that, that, that prevents them from breaking down fat off Correct. their back, so it reduces the negative energy Correct. balance and gets them back into a positive as, as much as you can. Yes, and we, we very much recommend um, ruminal stimulants, such as room booster or products Rumen. like that, that help get to the rumen, a three-day okay. course. Um, sometimes before the surgery, but always after the surgery. So for rumen booster, you, the farmer will get, is it six sachets of? Six sachets over three days, 
and a litre of kilovolt over three days. So they'll, the farmer will give them, will they give, will they give them the ruin booster one sachet a.m. and p.m. or Correct. give them two sachets together? No, one, one in the morning, one in the evening. Yeah. And they mix it up into water and then drench it back to throat. Correct. Is that yeah. it? Yeah. And what is the general reaction from farmers when you give them that and you, and you tell them that there's no need of antibiotics, just give them these two treatments and the cow should be fine? Well, all LDA surgeries get that treatment. Okay. Whether they get antibiotics or not, then is something Depending on the case. Condition. Okay. But we've been giving that regime since 2005, and feedback has been excellent. Okay. Our success rate at surgery has been consistently good, but more importantly, the return to production and fertility has been um, equally as impressive. And would it be a case where you might say to a farmer that Hold on to some rumen booster through the course of the year that if you had a cow that was maybe off farm, not eating concentrates in the springtime, maybe give them some rumen booster, see are they back eating in a, in, a, in a few hours or that evening, and then there may not be a need to go in with antibiotics because we know that the, the rumen is the engine for the cow and most, most infections are actually caused by lack of appetite yeah. uh, and, that could, and lack of appetite could be caused for a number of reasons. Historically, sometimes uh, people would have used a shot of something, a shot yeah. of an antibiotic yeah. in a cow postpartum if they thought the cow Gives everyone a peace of mind nearly. Whereas now what we're seeing is, on, you know, in cows that are back in production in the first three weeks after calving with no obvious signs of mastitis or pneumonia or anything like that, if you're still not happy with your cow's performance, give her some sugars through something like Ketovit, a rumen booster or some rumen or antacid, some it, yeah. ruminal stimulant um, product to help get that stomach moving. Okay, and get him back in action, yeah. get him back producing milk and get him back eating. Yeah. Yeah.